We have arrived at part four of saving the planet through nuclear energy. Last time we discussed three problems that need to be addressed in nuclear power. Cost, accidents, and nuclear waste. I'm going to add a word about nuclear weapons and nuclear proliferation, and I'm going to save the discussion of the means of averting accidents for next time in the final video of this series when we talk about emerging nuclear technologies. Because one of the properties of all new technologies is greater safety and reducing or eliminating the risk of accidents. But of course if we're going to use nuclear power it has to be safe. We can't have Fukushima's and Chernobyl's killing people and leaving vast swaths of land unoccupiable for hundreds or thousands of years. It goes without saying. I will mention that all of the nuclear accidents that are well known have occurred in what are called generation two plants, older plants that are not the future of nuclear technology. Here is a graphic that illustrates the transition from early reactor designs, generation one, to current emerging strategies called generation four designs, which we'll focus on in greater length in the next video. Suffice it to say that all older models in use today and all the reactors that suffered well-known accidents were generation two nuclear reactors. These are not acceptable or adequate, they are too risky, they are insufficiently efficient, and they are far too costly. Even so, it's worth considering that a recent NASA study has concluded that to date 1,800,000 lives have been saved through nuclear energy in lives that would have been lost due to air pollution related causes. And the study suggests that many more lives, even considering Fukushima, will be saved if we expand the use of nuclear energy. Let's move on to the major factor in the decline of construction of new nuclear power plants, cost. In the last video we looked at the increased costs of nuclear plant construction. I'm not an economist, I have only one major thought here. Limiting the model to letting the market decide often results in cheaper prices. Look at Jeff Bezos's net worth for example. People want cheap prices and convenience. Personally, I don't think a world without bookstores is a better world, but I only get a small piece of the vote. But when it comes to the best health care policy or the best energy policy, I'm not convinced that the market is necessarily smartest or sufficient. After all, that's what's led to our using fossil fuels the way we have for the last several decades when we were in a position to see where things were heading. Part of the high cost of nuclear power is that zero carbon emissions are not factored into the price. If we added the carbon cost to burning fossil fuels, the economics would shift significantly. I think energy is going to require a government industrial partnership. And while I'm not a fan of quite a bit of the Chinese system, it's not an accident that a substantial portion of new nuclear construction is occurring there. We need government to provide assistance and collaboration in the form of sharing research and development costs, providing acceptable sites for new plants, and assistance in funding and incentives. We also need cheaper plants, reliably made, probably modular in design, built remotely rather than individually designed and built on site, and built with standardized methods and materials. This is not an exhaustive list of measures, but they should help to make the cost cheaper. And that's all I'm going to say on cost for now. A word about nuclear proliferation. Nuclear weapons are, in my mind, one of the greatest risks to the world. I'm concerned that in the aftermath of the Cold War, there may be less awareness of the issue, and people may not be quite as cognizant of the fact that thousands of nuclear missiles are aimed and ready to be launched at a moment's notice. This is somewhat separate from the issue of nuclear power. Of course future designs should minimize products that could be used for any malevolent purpose. But existing nuclear weapons were produced by nations in large-scale industrial operations. Only signatories of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty can participate in trade or purchase of nuclear materials for peaceful nuclear energy purposes. This did not prevent North Korea from mining its own uranium for its weapons program. Nuclear energy used in the outside world did not contribute to North Korea's weapons program. And let us acknowledge that these are not the days of the Manhattan Project. Nuclear weapons are now almost a 75-year-old technology. 
providing electricity through nuclear power is not a driver of nuclear proliferation or the means. I'm afraid the issue is a byproduct of the fact that nuclear power was first a matter of public awareness through the nuclear bomb, the weapons of mass destruction that were used on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and that has confused the issue ever since, finally, on nuclear waste. This is a huge issue. None of us want a toxic radioactive product sitting around hazardous for thousands of years. First, let's go to a nuclear design that produces less waste or no waste. I will talk next week about new nuclear designs that use up radioactive byproducts in producing more energy. It does appear that there are future technologies capable of producing less waste or consuming it as fuel in the ordinary process of functioning. When it comes to existing nuclear waste, there's general scientific consensus that the best approach is deep geological storage. The technical means is there. It's the political will to accomplish it that's necessary. But I want to make another point. We are all opposed to nuclear waste, but I think of it as a temporary trade-off because we are facing an existential problem with climate change. It's not like we have a viable solution at hand. We have ideas and approaches. Let's try everything that makes sense. Carbon exchanges, incentives, renewables. But as I see it, we have an immediate need to stop greenhouse gas emissions. And looking further down the road, we will have solutions to improve or solve the storage problem. We need political will to implement these. We need to get better at integrating renewables into our energy system. We will have more rooftop solar energy systems, which, by the way, have their own significant problems in safe disposal. And down the road, maybe nuclear fusion will be the holy grail. For as long as I've been alive, the joke has been that nuclear fusion is 20 years away, and it's still 20 years away at least. Maybe we can get that down to five. I don't know. So nuclear waste is a real problem that will have to be managed, but not managed permanently. We need to get over the hump to save the planet from what we've been doing by burning fossil fuels on a massive scale. Any nuclear waste production is unfortunate and undesirable. Temporary measures that must be dealt with responsibly. Nuclear can get us across a bridge to a viable permanent technological energy solution. It may be a few decades until we create technologies with a superior trade-off. This is far better than the alternative. Because what is really unacceptable are countless homeless coastal refugees, several billion more who can't be adequately fed, and an earth that is no longer hospitable to humankind. Sorry for the grim ending, but keeping it real. In the final video on saving the world through nuclear energy, I'm going to focus on future technologies for a safer and more effective nuclear energy. Be sure to subscribe. You can follow my Instagram, and thanks a lot for watching.